Hello. Welcome to Millstuff channel. Today we gonna talk about the Boeing E3 Sentry, an American airborne early warning and control, AEW and C aircraft developed by Boeing. E-3s are commonly known as AWACS, Airborne Warning and Control System. Derived from the Boeing 707 airliner, it provides all weather surveillance, command, control, and communications, and is used by the United States Air Force, NATO, French Air and Space Force, Royal Saudi Air Force and Chilean Air Force. The E-3 is distinguished by the distinctive rotating radar dome, rotodome, above the fuselage. Production ended in 1992 after 68 aircraft had been built. In the mid-1960s, the U.S. Air Force, USAF, was seeking an aircraft to replace its piston-engined Lockheed EC-121 Warning Star, which had been in service for over a decade. After issuing preliminary development contracts to three companies, the USAF picked Boeing to construct two airframes to test Westinghouse Electric and Hughes's competing radars. Both radars used pulse Doppler technology, with Westinghouse's design emerging as the contract winner. Testing on the first production E3 began in October 1975. The first USAF E3 was delivered in March 1977, and during the next seven years, a total of 34 aircraft were manufactured. E-3s were also purchased by NATO, 18, the United Kingdom, France and Saudi Arabia. In 1991, when the last aircraft had been delivered, E-3s participated in the Persian Gulf War, playing a crucial role of directing coalition aircraft against Iraqi forces. The aircraft's capabilities have been maintained and enhanced through numerous upgrades. In 1996, Westinghouse Electric's Defense and Electronic Systems Division was acquired by Northrop Corporation, before being renamed Northrop Grumman Mission Systems, which currently supports the E-3's radar. In April 2022, the U.S. Air Force announced that the Boeing 737 AEW and C will be replacing the E-3 beginning in 2027. In 1963, the USAF asked for proposals for an airborne warning and control system, AWACS, to replace its EC-121 warning stars, which had served in the airborne early warning role for over a decade. The new aircraft would take advantage of improvements in radar technology and computer-aided radar data analysis and data reduction. These developments allowed airborne radars to look down, i.e. to detect the movement of low-flying aircraft and discriminate, even over land, target aircraft's movements. Previously this had been impossible due to the inability to discriminate an aircraft's track from ground clutter. Contracts were issued to Boeing, Douglas, and Lockheed, the latter being eliminated in July 1966. In 1967, a parallel program was put into place to develop the radar, with Westinghouse Electric Corporation and Hughes Aircraft being asked to compete in producing the radar system. In 1968, it was referred to as Overland Radar Technology, ORT, during development tests on the modified EC-121Q. The Westinghouse radar antenna was going to be used by whichever company won the radar competition since Westinghouse had pioneered the design of high-power radio frequency RF, phase shifters, which are used to both focus the RF into a pencil beam and scan electronically for altitude determination. Boeing initially proposed a purpose-built aircraft, but tests indicated it would not outperform the already operational 707, so the latter was chosen instead. To increase endurance, this design was to be powered by eight General Electric TF-34s. It would carry its radar in a rotating dome mounted at the top of a forward-swept tail, above the fuselage. Boeing was selected ahead of McDonnell Douglas's DC-8-based proposal in July 1970. Initial orders were placed for two aircraft, designated EC-137D, as test beds to evaluate the two competing radars. As the test beds did not need the same 14-hour endurance demanded of the production aircraft, the EC-137s retained the Pratt & Whitney JT-3D commercial engines, and a later reduction in the endurance requirement led to retention of the JT-3D engines in production. The first EC-137 made its maiden flight on 9 February 1972, with the fly-off between the two radars taking place from March to July of that year. Favorable test results led to the selection of Westinghouse's radar for the production aircraft. Hughes' radar was initially thought to be a certain winner due to its related development of the APG-63 radar for the new F-15 Eagle. The Westinghouse radar used a pipeline fast Fourier transform FFT, to digitally resolve 128 Doppler frequencies, while Hughes's radars used analog filters based on the design for the F-15. 
Westinghouse's engineering team won this competition by using a programmable 18-bit computer whose software could be modified before each mission. This computer was the AYK-8 design from the B57G program, and designated AYK-8 EP1 for its much-expanded memory. This radar also multiplexed a Beyond the Horizon BTH pulse mode that could complement the pulse Doppler radar mode. This proved to be beneficial especially when the BTH mode is used to detect ships at sea when the radar beam is directed below the horizon. The E3 Sentry's airframe is a modified Boeing 707-320B advanced model. Modifications include a rotating radar dome, rotodome, upgraded hydraulics from 241 to 345 bars, 3500 to 5000 psi, to drive the rotodome, single point ground refueling, air refueling, and a bailout tunnel or chute. In February 1987 the UK and France ordered E3 aircraft in a joint project which saw deliveries start in 1991. The British requirement arose due to the cancellation of the Bay Nimrod AEW-3 project. While France operates its E3F aircraft independently of NATO, UK E3Ds formed the E3D component of the NATO Airborne Early Warning and Control Force NAEWCF, receiving much of their tasking directly from NATO. However, RAF E3Ds remain UK manned and capable of independent, national tasking. This has been done on numerous occasions, notably when E3Ds were committed to operations over Afghanistan in 2001 and Iraq in 2003. The UK fleet has slowly been reduced from 7 since 2011. In 2009, the UK effectively limited the service life of the E3D fleet by defunding the Project Eagle upgrade which would have seen it upgraded in line with the USAF Block 4045th standard. Air Force's monthly reported that by December 2020, just two aircraft were available for operations at any one time. The Strategic Defense and Security Review 2015 had announced the intention to retain the E3D fleet until 2035, however in March 2019, the Ministry of Defense announced that the E3Ds would be replaced by five E7 Wedgetails from 2023. The £1.51 billion contract was awarded to Boeing without a competitive procurement process, a decision criticized by both competitors of Boeing and the UK's Defense Select Committee. The 2021 Integrated Defense Review confirmed a reduced order of three aircraft. On 27 January 2015, the RAF deployed an E-3D sentry to Cyprus in support of US-led coalition airstrikes against Islamic State militants in Iraq and Syria. The last intended operational flight by an RAF E-3 sentry was supposed to be in July 2021 with the sentry retired from service, however RAF ZH-101 and ZH-106 have both flown patrols over Poland, Eastern Europe during Russia's incursions into Ukraine during late February, March 2022. Citation needed. France operates four aircraft, all fitted with the newer CFM 56-2 engine.